Hi everyone, we are in my bathroom today for my five month follow up of my high dose tretinoin skincare program. I will leave a link to that original video down below and today I will share with you what the experience was like, the benefits I feel I've gained, um, my skin has gained, and also how I mixed up and if I changed any skincare uh, ingredients or products along the way. So if you're interested, um, please give it a thumbs up. Uh, feel free to subscribe. Also check out the original video. And if you're interested in signing up for my newsletter, go on over to my website and just leave me your email. And when I send out newsletters, you will be sure to get one as well. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually put on my skincare because my skin is getting dry. I actually did apply one product already because I just couldn't wait. Then I'll go through and apply everything with you as I talk about the differences that I've seen. So in terms of cleansers, um, I do have one new cleanser that I've been using. I've completely ran out of my uh, hydrating cleanser by Zio Skin Health. This is one of my favorites. It's completely empty. And I always like to have two cleansers so that one is a by my vanity and one is in my shower. So if you're a Sephora lover, I do really like the Fresh Soy Face Cleanser. I used to use this years ago and I've always thought this was a really nice gentle cleanser. So if you want Sephora brands, um, this is one of my favorite cleansers. And of course, the other one that I never live without is the cleansing gel from Skin Better Science, which is fragrance free. It's very gentle and it is a foaming cleanser, but the pump is really nice because it's so easy to dispense in the shower. So that is all essentially unchanged. I have since the last video occasionally started incorporating my exfoliating polish by Zio Skin Health. This is a physical uh, exfoliation product that has a magnesium oxide crystals. It's a very gentle physical exfoliator and I don't, I used to use this several times a week. Now because of the tretinoin, I don't use it as frequently, but I will occasionally reach for this. Just like I will occasionally reach for my complexion renewal pads, which I have right here. So I use these, but I used to use these twice a day. Now I maybe use these twice a week. So a lot less because I'm on the tretinoin, but in the last video, these were put aside because I was peeling too much and my skin was too sensitive and irritated. So these I've added occasionally. After that, I apply my Alto Defense Serum by Skin Better Science. This is an antioxidant formulation that contains 19 antioxidants, including vitamin E, vitamin C. It has three categories of antioxidants, um, enzymatic, water-soluble, and fat-soluble. So this is my favorite antioxidant serum, and I did apply that just because I was so dry after the shower. But now I'm gonna continue with you. And honestly, I've had very, very basic skincare while on this program. Today, after my Alto, I'm going to apply my Elastin Restorative Skin Complex because my skin is feeling pretty good. It's not dry, it's not irritated. So I love the Trihex technology, which helps build collagen. And it's also a really nice hydrator. It looks, it really looks just like a cream. So once I apply that, my skin will feel so much better. And then I can tell you about my experience over the last five months. So I do go a little closer to the eyes. I go on the orbital bone below the eyebrow and just the rest of my face with this product. And even maybe sometimes on my lips also and um, a little bit down my neck. Although I do have some neck products that I will show you that I've been using. Okay, I feel much better now. Okay, so let's talk about the benefits of this uh, high dose tretinoin regimen and how I um, adjusted my skincare based on my needs. Over the course of the last five months, I have not had a single hydrofacial. In fact, I miss my esthetician because I haven't seen her for so long. Um, and I am planning to go for one in the next few months here but I really haven't needed hydrofacial. I found that the tretinoin really um, regulated my sebum production. So if I was combination before, had areas that were oily, congested, areas that were dry, my skin is very uniform now. The oil production has decreased and I really have no congestion and I really don't need a facial 
for that deep cleanse purpose. So that's been one major, major change compared to the rest of my life. Another benefit that I've noticed is improvement in my hyperpigmentation, which is a combination of mild melasma and moderate sun damage. It just has lightened up ever so slightly and maybe slightly to moderately. I've been really, really happy with how uniform and my skin has looked. So that was another big, big advantage. And overall, it just, it feels more bouncy. It's, it's, it's so hard to show you that, but it just, it does. It just feels a little bit more bouncy. Those, those are the major changes that I've seen. And of those, I would say the oil production and the smaller, clearer pores are the biggest change that I've seen. Lessons I've learned. I've learned that it's optimal to do this program if there are no plans to be in the sun or get any other procedures done. I did go to Mexico for a week in December and that made me, I intended to continue using tretinoin, but once I got there and I was in the sun so much, I just realized it wasn't a good idea. So I stopped completely for a week. And I also stopped because I went to get uh, microneedling RF. And so I stopped for that. And my healing time from the microneedling RF was actually unusually long. So then I was off tretinoin again. And what I realized when I stopped using tretinoin for, I would say three days to, or more to a week, uh, and restart again, I would peel again and I would have to go through this uh, process of adjustment every single time I've stopped. So you do not pick up where you left off. You, If you stop during the program, you actually uh, take a few steps back before you move forward again. So that was my biggest lesson. Next time I do this, I'm definitely going to pick a time where I don't plan on doing any trips to sunny places and I don't plan on doing any procedures. It's just much easier that way because starting up again and peeling again, it's always frustrating. The skincare product that I found was most helpful when I did take those few steps back and was restarting again and was irritated was the Nectar by Elastin. This product was so soothing and healing on my skin when I had the irritation that I found it really got me back up to speed and recovered uh, where I could use go back to tretinoin nightly. Now, when I did get really irritated when I was starting up again, I would skip a night here and there. So, you know, I took my own advice and I really urge you to always listen to your skin. If you're really irritated, if products are stinging, if it, things aren't feeling good and you're red, listen to your skin and just take a step back and, you know, try again the next day. So I did do that. I've never really took more than two nights off. And I would say in general, if I was irritated, one night off was enough and then I would get back on it. So that is what happened when I took a few days off. It always set me back a few days and I had to ramp back up again. Overall, I would say the results were phenomenal. Again, the sebum production control was probably the biggest advantage and the improvement in hyperpigmentation was the second improvement and that bounciness to the skin, it just, it feels more youthful. So, and I don't know how much the Elastin Trihex technology played into it, but I mean, we know for sure from, you know, decades of research that tretinoin does increase collagen production. And obviously the longer you use it, the better results. So if you've used it for three years or five years, you see more results than if you've only been using it for four or five months. But even still, with the five months, I noticed a big difference. So now what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna continue using tretinoin nightly, but I'm gonna go back to a small amount, like the standard pea size amount. Um, and the reason for that is you don't wanna stay on a high dose tretinoin long-term because tretinoin is such a strong product and it does inflame and irritate the skin even once you adapt to it. Once you've reached that optimum peak skin health, you will persist with that very low grade skin inflammation if you continue using high doses over a long period of time. So after five to six months, 
the side effects outweigh the benefits. And that's why it's better to either lower your dose of tretinoin or just go back on a retinol. And if you like, you can do this regimen once a year or once every few years if you wanna sort of reach peak performance for your skin, really optimize your skin. And then to avoid a low grade long-term inflammation, just go back down to a lower dose or retinol. So that, those are my lessons and those are the products. Now, when I wasn't irritated, I primarily used the Restorative Complex. Again, it's because of the Trihex technology and this is really hydrating. I just found it was enough. So I would use the Alto and then I would use this. Other products I incorporated were the Even Tone. This is a brightening serum for hyperpigmentation from Skin Better Science. It's very gentle, it causes no irritation. So I would apply this after my Alto. And today I won't apply it because I already put the Regenerative Skin Complex on there. So I'm done other than sunscreen. If I ever needed more hydration, in addition to all the things I just mentioned, my go-to was the hydrating cream by Zio Skin Health, although as much as I used it at the beginning when I was adjusting to the high dose tretinoin and I was really red and peely, in the last few months, I've, I've seldom reached for this. In fact, I can't really remember the last time I, I used it. And for the neck, I once I had applied the tretinoin to my face, I dispensed more product and I applied it to the neck. I'm one of those people that can tolerate tretinoin on my neck quite well. I don't have a problem, but most necks can't handle it. They're far too sensitive. So I would apply the tretinoin and I would apply the Techno Neck Perfecting Cream. And actually, this is such a nice hydrator and it's so gentle. It never irritated, it never stung, it never gave me any problems. So this was my favorite hydrator for my neck during this entire experience. And this goes on so nicely. It's a really easy to distribute and it's just a lovely, lovely neck hydrator. And it increases the blood flow to your neck, which is great because it takes away, um, you know, the waste of the cells and it also brings in fresh nutrients and oxygen. And the way they do that is um, there's a stabilized arginine in the product and the stabilized arginine helps produce nitric oxide and nitric oxide improves the circulation and the blood flow in the vessels. So that's really uh, the update. In terms of sunscreen, my go-to most frequent sunscreen has been the Skin Better Science lotion, the tinted lotion. And the reason for that is it's SPF 75 and I just find it this sort of camouflages any pinkness or redness. It goes on really easy and it just offers excellent protection. It's got the UVA, UVB, blue light, infrared light, and pollution protection. So it's one of my favorites. So I would use this. And if I wanted more of a makeup look, a polished look, uh, filming a video look, I reach for the Flex from Color Science. I absolutely love this for a light foundation. I never ever wear foundation anymore. I just wear this. Occasionally I will powder on top of this. Most frequently for powder, I will use the Color Science, the Brush On Shield, and occasionally if I feel shiny and I'm going out, I'll just use a makeup powder. This I have in medium, and now that it's winter and I'm super pale, I mix it with either the Sheer Lotion from Skin Better Science or the um, Mineral Sunscreen from Elastin, and this actually also has just a, a touch of trihex technology so it kind of goes with my theme of collagen and elastin production so that has been it um, and in the evening i would wash my face i would wait for it to completely dry i wouldn't want it to be damp at all and once it was completely dry i would apply the tretinoin directly on my face by itself and then depending on how well my skin was doing i would follow it up with the nectar or I would follow it up with the restorative complex. And that was literally it. So it this routine actually became very, very basic. Um, and around my eyes, I would occasionally, what I used for my eyes throughout this course 
is actually interfuse lines because it's so hydrating. It's a hyaluronic acid serum, but the hyaluronic acid is coated in an envelope of, of lipids. So it actually absorbs in between the cells through the fatty mortar, if you will. And it's just a lovely, lovely hydrator. So this is primarily what I used around my eyes throughout the last five months. And as I mentioned in some of my Instagram, I think it was a reel I did, the tretinoin only on the bone, only like I would go kind of over the eyebrow and just underneath. And the reason for that is twofold. One is products migrate. So if you apply it here, it will go here. And the second reason is just like tretinoin controls the sebum production in the skin, it also controls the production of the lubrication that keeps your eyes from getting dry. So if you get any tretinoin too close to the eyes and you affect those little meibomian glands, you could get dry eyes. So it's really not worth trying to put tretinoin too close to the eye. And that's it. Um, it was a great experience. I'm really happy with the results. If you guys have any additional questions, please leave them for me down below and I'll see you guys in the next video.